Welcome to the Know, I'm Meg Turney. I'm Ryan Haywood. They say, never bite the hen that feeds you, but they didn't say anything about unleashing some superhero ass kicking on it. Yeah! <laughs> that must be the reason why one Marvel actress just blasted the way Marvel handles its cinematic universe. That's one way to not get hired again. Mm. Chloe Bennett, who plays Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Daisy Johnson, arguably its main character next to Phil Coulson, of course, recently criticized Marvel, arguing that they don't care about their own TV shows. Ooh. Bennett made these comments at a Q&A session during Wizard World Des Moines, when when asking about why more Avengers don't appear in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Bennett replied to that question, I don't know, people who make movies for Marvel, why don't you acknowledge what happens on our show? Why don't you guys go ask them that? Because they don't seem to care. Ooh, snap. Someone's asking to have her character axed next season. Yeah, here's the thing. When you say things mm. at conventions, people tend to record them. Bennett went on to say the Marvel Cinematic Universe loves to pretend that everything is connected, but then they don't acknowledge our show at Ooh, all. They're going to acknowledge you now by firing your ass. Very already complex. Uh, all of this comes in the wake of some troubling news about Marvel's other TV network plans with ABC. They recently nixed the idea of doing a Most Wanted series, which was an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff, and they pushed Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. back to the late 10 p.m. to Tuesday night spot due to the show's kind of less than stellar ratings. Who doesn't want to stay up till 10 p.m. on a Tuesday, kids? By the way, that's not even mentioning the dozens of network TV shows that have been canceled over the last couple of weeks, including Marvel's Agent Carter. Rip. Yes. Yeah, Castle, The Muppets, Agent Carter. It was like the red wedding of TV show cancellations. Yeah, well, Castle, come on now. He brought that on himself. <laughs> Nathan Fillion, I love you forever. Uh, H.E. Carter was, of course, the one that had Marvel fans most upset. It was a lady kicking ass, for one, but it also provided a valuable bridge from Captain America the First Avenger to the modern MCU. But oddly enough, Marvel wasn't the only one affected by network TV shakeups. DC's Supergirl, which was previously airing on CBS, is this your Supergirl? No, no that was the shakeups. Shakeups, got uh, it, okay. Uh, 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 Supergirl has been moved to join the real network for TV shows. The CW. How dare you? Rain is on the CW. That's quality television. <laughs> so it looks like, looks like both Marvel and DC are struggling in the TV superhero department, leading some to wonder if this means that the superhero TV shows are in trouble of kind of dying out. But while network TV ratings paint a dim picture, the success of Marvel shows on Netflix demonstrates otherwise. Both superhero powerhouses have taken entirely different approaches to how they incorporate or don't incorporate their TV and film universes. For Marvel, they've tried to keep those things loosely connected, while DC has just said, fuck it, with any continuity running in different universes constantly. But neither of those approaches has led to massive ratings for the studios, at least on network television. And for Marvel in particular, this is really surprising. While tying their movie and TV universes together originally seemed like a great direction, it's led to a number of issues, like the kind that fans and Chloe Bennett have been complaining about. People initially expected lots of cool-ass Avengers crossovers, but that really hasn't been the case. Turns out it's really expensive to get a movie yeah, actor on TV. Exactly. Uh, going back to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the crossover there has been super minimal. When the show first started, it basically had nothing to do with the movies at all outside of Phil Coulson's appearance and resurrection. However, later on in Season 1, around the time that Winter Soldier launched, the events of that movie kickstarted a big event for the series, uh, with the revelation that Hydra was being deeply embedded within S.H.I.E.L.D. Samuel Jackson also made a couple of appearances, but he shows up in everything now. Except so. for in Captain America Civil War. Except for that Spoiler. one. Spoiler. It wouldn't be that much of a surprise to see him after the credits of Justice League at this point. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here. Oh shit, wrong universe. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Things are weird now. Oh, teleport me back to my universe. Get me back to the successful one. <laughs> All right. Uh, after those major events, the show picked up for a lot of fans, especially as they went on the hunt for Hydra, later moving toward a storyline involving the Inhumans. But now the Inhumans movie's future is is questionable at best, so I mean, there goes that chance of a crossover. It's kind of unrealistic for Bennett, or the fans, to expect much content from the TV shows to make it to the movies. For one, nobody at ABC or Marvel is looking to pay Robert Downey Jr. money to any of the Avengers, or any of the Avengers to walk on set for a couple hours, cause that would basically cost another movie. It's expensive. Mm. Plus, you don't want to confuse movie watchers by throwing in a bunch of references to storylines that they haven't caught up with on TV. The cinematic universe is already daunting enough as it is for the average film goer. We're talking 13 movies 
plus at this point without expecting them to watch 50 plus hours of television to be up to speed. Marvel Studios runner Kevin Feige recently made comments about some of the other reasons why it doesn't make a ton of sense to do crossovers with TV. He cited a number of issues that make it unfeasible, like the fact that movies are developed way ahead of TV shows, so it'd be kind of hard to keep it in sync. Yeah, other connected TV film universes have run into this before. Pablo Hidalgo, a story executive for Star Wars, recently revealed on Twitter that because of film continuity, the Clone Wars TV show had to keep making up reasons for Anakin <laughs> and General Grievous to never be in the same room since they mentioned in episode three that they've never met before. <laughs> Yeah, give me one more. Uh, no, uh, he's got a hangnail today. Oh, Sorry, it's so he's, weird. Yeah, he's not going to be here. They're actually the same person. Like, <laughs> just keep putting on different outfits. Uh, another thing that makes Marvel TV and movie crossovers difficult would be the rumors of strife between the TV and movie production arms, uh, most notably because Ike Perlmutter, the eccentric CEO of Marvel? That's a nice way of putting it. Uh, controls TV production after losing control of the films to Feige and Disney. Yes, but again, hey, those are just rumors, man. I mean... Maybe Nathan Fillion's a really nice dude. I, here he is. Yeah, well, so apparently not in the cancellation of Castle. That's all right. I'm just saying. That's what I read. All right, so he doesn't get along with Santa Cat. Yeah, well, can't push somebody out and not expect your show to get canceled. Punk? So... I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's a nice man. Well, the restrictions <laughs> of the cinematic universe is something that hurts Marvel on network TV. It's something that's helped them in terms of premium content, like the Defender Heroes on Netflix, for instance. Those do operate in the same universe, but have nothing to do with S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers, etc. So it gives them a ton of freedom to operate with the actual heroes rather than D-listers. Which is much more like the DC model. They've been able to use some of their primary characters like The Flash, Supergirl, and Arrow simply because they've ignored movie continuity entirely. It gives them many more villains and storylines to tackle they haven't already been claimed by some guy in a suit for his expanded universe. And so far, the model seems to work better for Marvel, too. I mean, Daredevil and Jessica Jones were decently big hits and had a lot of positive buzz around them mm -hmm. with a Punisher spinoff already greenlit by the network. Really, it's odd that they're getting so much better space to operate on Netflix, considering that Marvel and ABC are both owned by Disney. It seems like that would have been the perfect solution for them to build out a ton of network TV options on, but in all likelihood, that relationship might be one of the only things that's kept Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. from being canceled outright. It wouldn't look too good for Marvel to have no shows running on network TV. As for whether or not we'll ultimately see any additional crossover, time will tell. The upcoming Infinity Wars movies could be a decent opportunity to at least, you know, throw a whole orgy of Marvel characters from Netflix and ABC, but the Russo brothers have said that that's kind of unlikely due to the same logistics we mentioned earlier from Feige. So what do you guys think of Marvel's approach to TV? They kill it everywhere else. And also, if you had this girl's job, would you be ballsy enough to call out Marvel? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. That's famous. Yeah? It must be nice to be famous. Is that the girl from uh, How I Met Your Mother? Let me tell you this, no clue who she is. Yeah, that's, I, I should know that. Yeah. Uh, for future news about people slamming companies, people, dogs, and whatever else, like this video, subscribe to the know. During Wizard World Des Moines. Des Moines. What, what? How do you not know Des Moines? Well, I just, I, Des Moines is down there. I was like, Des, where are we going with this? No, I hadn't gotten to Des Moines yet. I wasn't. Des Moines, Des Moines. sneaks up There's on no me. There's no S there either. It's just Des Moines. No, it's Des Moines. Right, but I'm saying when you say Des Moines, Idaho. I'm reading Idaho. across here is Wizard World Des. Okay, but here's, you Moines. know what? Maybe this is why you screw up words so much. Rai, you got to read like three words ahead of where well, you actually are. Well, yeah, I was behind are. on this one. I was a little behind on it. Anyway, Bennett made these comments at a Q&A session during Wizard <laughs> Wizard <laughs> Bennett made these comments at a Q&A session at Wizard World Des Moines. <laughs> 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 I'm not crying anymore. <laughs>